pluralistic universe is a later writing of William James. It develops his own overbelief, as he calls it, which interprets the data of religious experience from the ending of his earlier book, The Varieties of Religious Experience. It's also the mature form of his radical empiricism from The Will to Believe and other essays in popular philosophy. A pluralistic universe draws from three other philosophers James thinks are important. Josiah Royce, Henri Bergson, or Henry Bergson, and especially Gustav Theodor Fechner. It's also in dialogue with Hegelianism, as James reads Hegel himself, and as Hegelianism is represented by various Hegelian philosophers of the late 1800s and the early 1900s. This book is a criticism of the Hegelian philosophy and an attempt to articulate an alternative to Hegelianism. Now, according to that Hegelian philosophy, there is an absolute reality, which is a god who contains all things. It's a form of monism and a form of pantheism. All is one. All is God. All is in the mind of God, and the way things truly are is the way God sees them. What is ultimately real is the perfection of God. All imperfection and all change are illusions. There are some important criticisms of Hegelianism in this book. The world as we experience it is not at all like the world as Hegelianism accounts for it. Hegelianism is a form of idealism, which means that ideas are real and says that to be is to be perceived, which was uh, George Barclay's old uh, account of idealism. So reality should be as we perceive it, according to the Hegelian philosophy, and yet uh, what we perceive is not real, according to Hegelianism. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. Hegelianism can also make no sense of evil or of imperfection. All is perfect in the mind of God. Hegelianism is rational in some respects, it assures us that everything makes sense. It gives us a very comfortable picture of reality as all hanging together in an orderly way. But it's not rational in all respects. It tells us that the world as we know it is unreal and that our actions and our choices are not able to make a difference to the inevitable triumph of divine reason. So it's not a teaching we can live by. It's not practical. And practicality is one aspect of rationality. So those are some of the criticisms of Hegelianism you'll find here. James' book is an attempt to articulate an alternative to the Hegelian philosophy, and his alternative does have some important resemblances to Hegelianism. Everything is connected. The whole of reality can be considered on a religious model. James is willing to call his view a form of pantheism. All reality is divine. Or maybe it would be better to say... All reality is connected to God. I'm honestly not quite sure if that's a better way to describe it. But uh, it's also different from Hegelianism in some important ways. While all is divine, not all is one. This is a view we can call pantheistic, but it's a pluralistic pantheism in contrast with a Hegelian monistic pantheism. All is divine, not all is one. James' view is consistent with the world as we experience it, a world where not everything is, is one thing. The main points of James' alternative view are as follows. All things are connected. All reality is divine, or all reality is connected to God. Not all reality is one. God exists. God is finite. James says, I believe in the finite God. There are limits to God. Not all reality is contained within God. Our minds connect to the mind of God. In fact, James describes our minds as being the outer regions of the mind of God. Doing my best to put this idea into words, our minds overlap with God's mind. Our minds are continuous with the mind of God. Our minds access God and think some of the same things. What we know, God knows. What we desire, at our best, God also desires. What we at our best desire, God also desires. God wants to make a better world, and God enlists us in his service in this work. Now, finally, what sort of argument can we get for James' view from this book? Here are a few pointers on that. Hegelianism... He says, doesn't make much sense. It doesn't fit the world as we experience it. And it's, uh, uh, it doesn't have that practical aspect of rationality. G Hegelianism is an irrational view in uh, that one aspect of rationality, practicality. James' view, however, is practical, and it does fit the world as we experience it. It is a view that the world is the way it appears to be, and it's a view that um, can guide our lives in the world. It tells us that how we live actually matters. In the world as we experience it, things are connected. In the world as we experience it, things are not one. In the world as we experience it, change is real. And so our error and imperfection. James' view is at least as rational as the Hegelian view, but uh, 
besides making about as much sense as things, it's also much, much more practical. Uh, that's, that's part of his argument. Our own minds have outer regions. Mental states that pass in and out of consciousness, like the sensations in my left leg that I'm often not paying any attention to. These mental states are both one with or continuous with our own minds, but they're also not identical to our minds. And James says this is a plausible model for the relation of our minds to God. And finally, the data of religious experience indicate that there really is such a thing as higher divine mind that our minds come into contact with and are not actually separate from. Our minds, in this region of human experience, religious experience, our minds appear to join with the mind of God in much the same way those smaller mental states joined with our minds. And that's it. <laughs> I hope that helps. I recommend what I've said here as a model for interpreting William James in this book. If it works, keep it. Keep it until you learn better. It's a uh, beautiful little book. It's eloquent. Uh, it's a lovely piece of Jamesian writing. <laughs> it's also uh, a difficult, uh, difficult book fully to understand. I hope, I hope this video will help some of you uh, grow in your understanding of this interesting little book, A Pluralistic Universe by William James. Thanks for watching.